Other than the Earth itself, the Sun is the most vital cosmological object for life. Without it, there would be no life on Earth. The Sun is our closest star, and stars shine thanks to nuclear fusion taking place in their core. Stars represent a celestial battle of two opposing forces, gravity trying to collapse the matter to near nothingness, and an opposing radiation pressure trying to explode the star. This tug of war goes on throughout the life of a star, but it comes to an end close to the time that it runs out of fuel, at which point it becomes unable to continue the fusion process. And so the outward radiation pressure decreases. Gravity then inevitably becomes overwhelming and the star undergoes collapse. When a star collapses, many things can happen depending on the size and properties of the star. Large stars collapse in a colossal explosion called a supernova. But if the star is extremely large, at least 30 times as massive as our sun, it undergoes an even more massive explosion so enormous that its power is second only to the Big Bang itself. This is called a hypernova. Such an explosion can be detected because it sends out an enormous, long-lasting gamma ray burst. Gamma rays are the most powerful and energetic form of electromagnetic radiation known. And such long-lasting bursts are a telltale sign of the most powerful explosions in the universe, which are often hypernovae. These bursts are like a laser beam on steroids. They're so powerful that they'll fry anything in their path, including the Earth. If such a hypernova burst occurs even 200 light years from us, it would fry our atmosphere and end all life on Earth. And the scariest part is that we would not see it coming because the gamma ray beam would be traveling at the speed of light. The moment we saw it hit us, it would kill us. Is this a real existential danger to us here on Earth? How do these hypernovae occur? How do these gamma ray bursts form? And why are they so deadly? That's coming up right now. Ever since I started this channel, one of my main missions has been to promote science education, particularly to younger people or young at heart. KiwiCo, today's sponsor, offers something for kids of all ages that I'm really excited to tell you about. They deliver projects and activities in what's called crates. What's really great about these crates is that they give kids a chance to explore and tinker with the world around them. This is the kind of hands-on learning that got me interested in engineering and science. I have two crates here. The first one is called Tinker Crate. It contains everything you need to create a walking robot. It comes with this awesome Tinkerzine magazine that tells you about how robots are used in society and science. And like every crate, it comes with easy to understand illustrated instructions and everything you need to build is always in the box. So no need to make a trip to the hardware store. The second one I have is called Eureka Crate. You'll apply science and math to engineer this incredible pinball machine. If you want to inspire your kids to be the next generation of innovators, I think you're really going to find KiwiCo amazing. And right now you can get 50% off your first month of KiwiCo by clicking the link in the description or use the discount code ARVIN. Be sure to check it out and you'll be supporting this channel with your purchase. So I really appreciate that. Stars begin their life as clouds of gas and dust in space, known as molecular clouds in stellar nurseries. All the stars you see in the sky, including the sun, started out in such gases. Gravitational forces cause these clouds to condense and contract, increasing the density and temperature of their cores. As the cloud continues to contract, it forms a dense, hot core called a protostar. This core continues to accrete more and more matter from the surrounding cloud. During this phase, the protostar is shrouded in a cocoon of gas and dust. When the temperature and pressure at the core of the protostar reaches a critical point, around 10 million degrees Celsius for most stars, nuclear fusion reactions begin. These reactions primarily involve the conversion of hydrogen into helium through a process similar to what occurs in the sun's core. The energy generated by these reactions provides the heat and light that make the stars shine, as well as the radiation pressure to hold off gravitational collapse. The balance between the inward force of gravity and the outward pressure generated by the fusion reactions keeps the star stable and in a state of equilibrium. Larger and more massive stars tend to be hotter and brighter, but also have shorter lifespans compared to smaller stars. For example, the lifespan of our sun, a medium-sized star, is about 10 billion years. It's about halfway through its life right now. 
But stars that are about 30 times more massive than the Sun last only a few million years. Eventually, the core of the star runs out of hydrogen. When that happens, the star can no longer hold up against gravity. Its inner layers start to collapse, which squishes the core, increasing the pressure and temperature in the core of the star. While the core collapses, the outer layers of material in the star start to expand outward. The star expands to larger than it's ever been, a few hundred times bigger. At this point, the star is called a red giant. What happens next depends on the mass of the star. For stars like our Sun, the radius at this stage may reach out to the orbit of Earth and swallow it, but its core will still have enough heat and pressure to cause helium to fuse into carbon, keeping the core from collapsing further. But once the helium runs out, the Sun will shed most of its mass, forming a cloud of material called a planetary nebula. Its core, however, will cool and shrink, leaving behind a small, hot ball called a white dwarf. A white dwarf doesn't collapse against gravity because of the pressure of electrons repelling each other in its core. But for massive stars greater than about eight times the mass of the Sun, their fate is much more spectacular. These high-mass stars go through some of the same steps as medium-mass stars like the Sun, with the exception that after helium runs out, their mass provides enough gravitational pressure to continue the fusion reaction. So after the supply of helium runs out, it is hot and dense enough to fuse carbon into neon. Fusion reactions occur until the core is filled with iron atoms. Up to this point, the fusion reaction put out energy, allowing the star to fight gravity. But fusing iron takes more energy than it produces. So the star eventually loses the battle against gravity. The core temperature rises to over 100 billion degrees as the iron atoms are crushed together until the repulsive force between positively charged nuclei overcomes the force of gravity. And the core recoils from the heart of the star in an explosive shock wave. This shock can propel the material away from the star at close to the speed of light in a tremendous explosion called a supernova. About 75% of the mass of the star is ejected into space in a supernova. So if the star prior to the explosion was 20 times the mass of the Sun, after losing 75%, its core will be about five times the mass of the Sun. For stars with leftover cores of anywhere from 1.4 to five times the mass of the Sun, it will collapse into a neutron star. But if the core is larger, it will collapse into a black hole. So only stars with more than 20 times the mass of the Sun will become black holes. The black hole forms when the remaining core of the supernova, because of its huge mass, is able to overcome quantum mechanical pressures which keep the core from collapsing in lower mass stars. The core continues to compress uncontrolled into theoretically an infinitesimally small volume. This means the entire mass of the core has compressed into zero volume. This is called a singularity. At least that's what our equations say. But infinities in our math equations usually indicate some kind of breakdown of the theory. So a singularity is probably an undefined realm of space-time which our current theories can't explain. According to scientists, a hypernova occurs when even larger stars, more than 30 times the mass of the Sun, quickly collapse into a massive black hole. What distinguishes this explosion from other supernova explosions is that they are 10 to 100 times more powerful than a supernova, and that they result in a collimated beam of gamma rays, or put more simply, a narrow beam of gamma rays, similar to a laser that travels across the universe. These gamma ray bursts can last anywhere from fractions of a second to hours. They're highly energetic. A typical burst releases as much energy in a few seconds as the sun will release in its entire 10 billion year lifetime. They're rare. A few such bursts occur per galaxy every million years. But since there are at least 200 billion galaxies in the universe, and these rays have infinite reach, a few hundred thousand of these occur every year somewhere in the universe. About one gamma ray burst is detected every day on Earth. But so far, every burst we've detected has occurred outside of our own galaxy. I should mention that besides supernovae, gamma rays can also be formed by very heavy mergers, such as when two neutron stars merge, or when a neutron star merges with a black hole. The biggest question you may have is, how does a narrow beam of gamma rays form? Shouldn't these photons be emitted spherically, just like the way the matter is expelled from the hypernova? 
The interesting thing is that when scientists first discovered these gamma ray bursts, calculations showed that the source of the explosion would have more energy than the Big Bang itself, which was not possible. But this calculation was based on a spherical photon burst. When they discovered that the burst actually occurs in a narrow beam, the energy numbers became much more realistic. The exact mechanism of the formation of this beam is not settled science, so I'll tell you what scientists speculate is going on. What we do know is that it comes out in two jets in opposite directions. It has to be in two opposite directions, so the momentum of each cancels out. The hypothetical mechanism is the following. The material ejected from the explosion is a plasma, which results from gases heated to such extremes that they lose electrons from their atoms. In addition, the rapid rotation of the dying star twists up its magnetic field. This means that the easiest path of escape for any of the charged particles being ejected from the hypernova is along a narrow beam at the poles of the rotation, since the magnetic field can't get as tangled in that direction. The particles being ejected are largely electrons. The twisted magnetic field causes the electrons to travel in a kind of helix, like a DNA molecule. If the electrons are moving fast enough, the rapid change of direction can produce high energy photons or gamma rays. Gamma rays can also form if extremely fast electrons crash into photons. The transfer of energy to the photon can cause it to gain energy and become a gamma ray. The other question you might have is, can one of these things kill us? First, let me point out that, as I said earlier, they are quite rare within our galaxy. They might occur a couple of times every million years or so. If the beam is not directly pointed at us, then we should be fine. Since the gamma ray beam is collimated like a laser, it does not spread out much, like the light from a lamp. So there's a low probability that it would just happen to be directly pointed at us. Also, if the burst originated far enough away, then we might be protected because space is not completely empty, and the beam could collide with other celestial bodies between us and the origin of the beam diffusing the ray and making it harmless. But if it's pointed directly at us, within our galaxy at about 200 light years or closer, it would cause a global extinction event. It would burn our atmosphere and vaporize our oceans. But even at greater distances from within our own galaxy on the order of a thousand or more light years away, it would still sterilize life on the side of Earth pointed towards the burst. Such a burst is believed to have caused a mass extinction on Earth about 443 million years ago. A hypernova is the most energetic event in the universe, exceeded only by the Big Bang. Could it happen again? Sure, it's a possibility. There are about 100,000 stars within a 200 light year radius of Earth. Although scientists haven't discovered any stars in this vicinity that are large enough to explode in a hypernova, you might take some comfort knowing that if we do get hit, we will not see it coming. Since gamma rays are a form of light, they travel at the speed of light, so we would have no warning. In addition, they are completely invisible anyway, because their frequencies are too high for our eyes to detect, even higher than x-rays. We in the Earth would just fry, with no warning whatsoever. But for now, I'm pretty sure I'll be around to see you in the next video, my friend. <laughs>